Hello everybody and welcome to this Train Sim TV video. Today we're taking a look at Just Trains' newly released Midland Mainline Derwent Valley Line add-on. This is an add-on to the Midland Mainline Sheffield to Derby route, so you do require that route before you're loading this route. And this adds in the section from Matlock to Ambergate, a journey of around 7 miles uh, through the beautiful Derwent Valley, something that uh, I've been working on with Just Trains for the last two months or so. As always with these Just Trains routes that we do, it's not going to be a review because I'm not in a position to review it, I've been working on it, I'm biased. So if you're wanting to look at reviews, I'm sure there'll probably be another one appear on YouTube at some point, uh, and they're worth no doubt watching. From my personal point of view, I'm really proud of what we've achieved with this one. I feel like it's the best that we've done with Just Train, certainly, uh, for a long time. And it's hopefully a sign of things to come in the future. First thing you'll notice, as you can see, is look at the lighting is now much better. And I'll go into why that is in a short while. So we're sat here at Matlock, we're going to take a look around the station before we take a, a drive off down the line to Ambergate and beyond through to Derby. This is one of the included scenarios, it is um, 2N51, the 15.37 Matlock to Newark Castle, and it calls all stations to Derby. I'll pause the game now, I'm just going to open the doors. And then I'll pause it again, just so I can take you for a look around Matlock. So... Obviously all this has been specifically made for the uh, Derwent Valley Line route. you got Matlock Town over there. The town itself is quite low detail just because we don't want to take too much uh, hogging you know, your system requirements and stuff, your, your system resources on doing a town that nobody can see from the train. So obviously mixed in with some trees so that it's nice and hidden away and not too uh, demanding on system. Up here you got where the peak, like, peak railway line comes in. Uh, the scenery ends just up there. Uh, behind the bridge but most scenarios obviously end at Matlock because that's where the end of the line is so this is the Matlock station the assets for this route have been developed by Wolstead uh, he's done a fantastic job with some of these uh, and a really nice detail so you get the peak rail sign there uh, that is the entrance to the peak railway platform so they run services up the valley we haven't included obviously the, the Matlock the peak railway itself isn't included in the route just this station platform here is included for people to uh, see. So you got the peak rail platform on the right, network rail platform on the left. Services from here run mainly to Newark Castle, although they also run and terminate at Nottingham and Derby, I believe, as well. So under here you got the uh, station buildings and stuff. Lovely detailing that was put into this. And then outside you got the uh, peak rail shop and everything. So he's, he's spent a lot of time. Got, oh, he's also got the bus station over here that's been put in. So I'm going to go in the cab now. We'll set up and we'll get ready for a, a, a ride down the line to Derby. So we're just going to first set the cab up. Now this section is operated by a token. Uh, there's little token boxes on the stations in real life where the uh, Ambergate station and Matlock station where the route is controlled from. And that's these little boxes, as far as I understand it here. And there's one also at Matlock, at Ambergate, that's very similar. So I'm just going to set the cab up. Check the lights, as set which they are. And we're due to depart in just over a minute's time. So we'll just leave the unit running there for now. So all this section here again is a custom asset, including the little uh, bridge underneath. Line then emerges, it goes through a cutting, uh, and then curves around sharply over the river uh, Derwent and into high tar tunnels, which we'll show you in a few minutes. You got the footbridge over there, that goes across the Sainsbury's, and car park then over the back as well. As I said, the town's over there, relatively low detail because at the end of the day when you're in the cab, you can't see that at all, so there's no point in going overboard on it. So we're due to part here in just over a minute's time. There's five stations on this Ambergate to Matlock line. You've got Matlock, Matlock Bath, Cromford, Watts Stanwell, Ambergate, and then you join the Midland Main Line, Sheffield to Derby, Ambergate Junction, before stopping at Belper and Duffield and route to Derby, which is about a 23 minute journey for us, is it? Sorry, a 33 minute journey for us from here. So, ready to depart. So 
So we're just going to gradually pull away now from Matlock Station. Next stop for us, Matlock Baffin, just over a mile's time as we head down the valley. Speed limit out of here is 15 miles an hour. It raises quickly to 50 miles an hour, as you can see, just past this tunnel. So you should notice, obviously, the foliage is much different now to any previous GAT route. We've now got uh, the new trees, which were developed by Vulcan Productions, they're in use throughout the entire Midland Mainline, Sheffield to Derby and Derwent Valley lines. So you download the, the update for Sheffield to Derby, you'll get these new trees all across that route. So in a second we're going to cross over the A6 road. Once again a really nice custom asset. It's been developed by Willstead. Now we curve sharply around. We're just passing now the fixed distance sign. Uh, that's for the way into da into Matlock Station in the opposite direction. And we're going to head down the steep the hill, well, the steepish hill, 1 in 177 to Matlock Bath. This is the first of the high tour tunnels that we're entering. You very quickly come out of this one into another one, and then you emerge into Matlock Bath just afterwards. A very short tunnel in between these two. So you got the short gap there before we head into the other tunnels. And this last long tunnel, as we burst out of here, you'll see the awesome view above with the cable cars, which uh, is a scene that's uh, one of my favourites that I've been able to work on myself. You have the heights of Abraham cable cars, you can just see the, the cables for those going above. We'll have a look at that in a second when we stop at Mallow Bath. You can get a glimpse of them there. And this is Mallow Bath station that we're now arriving at. I am running a little bit late because I'm sort of running quite a steady drive at the moment. Should be a little bit driving faster down that hill. So very short stops on this line, so whilst we're stopped here I'll pause the game. This is Matlock Bath Station as I said. Again, Will's worked quite hard on this one. We've got all sorts of bits of artwork and stuff that's on there in real life. You've got the Whistle Stop Cafe. Uh, lovely station building. I'm not sure what the design is, but it's like a, almost like a Swiss design uh, with timbers and stuff like that, breaking up the bricks. All these stations on this line, they have artwork from local children, that uh, uh, pupils at local schools, so they've all put artwork onto the stations in real life, and they're taken from photo textures, the ones that we could uh, get photos of nicely. So you'll see a couple of them repeat, but pretty much. Each, well, each station has its own different drawings on it. So you've got the original platform down here, from when it used to be a longer platform, that's been given like a, a disuse sort of feel to it, as you can see there. And then you go up here, towards High Tor Tunnel, the road goes underneath over to the high, uh, Heights of Abraham cable cars. Now these aren't animated, I know some people would have wanted them animated, but there's a few reasons uh, why we haven't. One is, chiefly, we didn't have the time to uh, unfortunately do that. Also, they t if you were animated, they would take more on your system resources, which is something that we're not keen to do because I know just train suits by the nature are quite demanding already on system resources. But uh, also, when they stop at the station, so you got you, there's another set of cars right up at the top station. So when a set stops at a station, these these will actually stop, I believe, in midair, as far as we know. Uh, we weren't able to actually research it because it was shut at the time we're doing the research, so as far as we know there's some, some cars can stop in the middle like that. But we also want to just recreate, recreate it so you could get some really nice screenshots. So like if you go down here, you can actually get screenshots of the trains going past and stuff. But we'll put a lot of detail into these, we uh, spent quite a long time doing this and some really intricate details like the cable networks and stuff that we've uh, put on. Uh, same inside the actual station, 
you got the actual cable, it goes all the way around the reel and everything. And then it comes all the way underneath these cogs on both sides. So you can actually see how it all works. Got a little scene created there with a guy, um, sort of sat around. And obviously you got the cable cars up here. And they're actually attached to the uh, cables themselves. And one of these I put a person in. Yeah, there's a guy in that one. Oh, and he's lonesome. He's just testing it out, I think. And then it does obviously, it goes up to the other station at the top up here. Uh, because you can't see this on the train, it's more more of a basic up this end. But essentially, you got the other station at the top, where the cable again goes around. Slightly different station than one at the bottom. The one at the bottom is a, a bigger sort of station. But you get the idea that we've gone for there. So you can get some really nice screenshots as stuff comes out of that tunnel. Anyway, let's get back to our train. So we're just waiting now, doors to close again, my little bath. Pretty quiet station, this one. All the stations on this line are of a, a rural nature. Our next stop straight away is Cromford in about three quarters of a mile. So it's really not far at all, it's just through Wellesley Tunnel. And this line was once a, a much more sort of integral line, it used to run through to Manchester via Buxton. So in those days it would have been a double track line. Uh, pretty busy as well. These days it's just a rural branch. We're now going into Wellesley Tunnel. And from this tunnel we immediately will emerge into Cromford Station. It's quite a tricky one to judge your braking at sometimes. Because obviously you can't really see much when you're inside the tunnel. As I said, it's quite a tricky one to do your braking up, so I've normally gone straight through there. Again, fully custom station. This is a really nice station. I, I really like how it's it's a totally different design to what you see on any other railway station, really. You've got this little hut over here on the right hand side. Uh, that's I think it's some sort of bed and breakfast accommodation these days. It's got its little tourism plaque on the front there. It's an unusual building. This scene was actually used in uh, one of Oasis's album covers. They actually filmed uh, or photographed here, which was quite cool. All sorts of little bits of signage on this station. These posters that advertise the Dirt Valley. And I can't recommend this area enough to uh, potential tourists. It's a beautiful area. Uh, something that we've tried to capture with the route. I'm just going to pause that while we look around. So you've got more signage, custom signage, dotted around. And direction of travel, as you can see, Matlock to the left, Darby to the right. And you got underneath the canopy. Uh, we'll actually do some pretty cool custom textures as well, because it is really sort of a, a leafy, mossy area. You've got a bit of moss on the side edge of the platforms and stuff like that. And then this again is the Willis Tunnel, 764 yards. So about half a mile in length, I think, roughly. Then you got the back again, this is a private dwelling in the back here, I think it might again be a, a, some sort of bed and breakfast or something. And then the approach road for the station curves away and it joins the main road down there. And then again, uh, as I was saying before, you got all this uh, custom, these drawings that kids have done, local kids. They're all included. 
various ones um, around the station as per real life. And then there's these cool bike racks as well. I like those that we got made. So we'll depart now like we're doing and uh, just show you the viaduct that we actually go over as we leave the station here. It's quite a, uh, a nice little viewpoint. And as we depart uh, Cromford, you go alongside Cromford Meadows, which is what we're doing now, on the right. And from here we follow the uh, to the Cromford Canal all the way down to Ambergate so that will snake its way alongside us pretty much all the way down down to Ambergate itself. So as I was saying at the start we've now got uh, different lighting and stuff. We alias in the Train Sim Academy lighting. So Train Sim Academy comes with all versions of Train Simulator. The only way you won't have Train Sim Academy is if you have purposely unticked it and you've installed add-ons part of Steam. If you have, you need to re-tick it and then you'll get all the lighting changes and stuff that you've done. Uh, we've also added in a lot of extra foliage, so you'll see lots of weeds and stuff like that on the left. Try and break it up, the uh, VP grass that we had in before, to give you a much more um, dynamic feel to it. And it's sort of thing that we're continuing to build on. It came quite late in development of this route, but I feel we've struck a good balance. As we come around here, we pass High Peak Junction. which I'll show you as we're going past because this is a, another area of detail that we've added in. So you've got High Peak Junction's workshops, uh, there's a little van at the back there and that's the former incline that used to be a, a rope work incline that went up the hill uh, and that was the Cromford and High Peak Railway, really interesting and worth looking into uh, if you haven't heard of it before, it's uh, a, a fascinating piece of history. The lines used to run down the right hand side of the canal there as well. So we've got all sorts of little features like this sign uh, and with it being a short line, that's what we tried to go for. We tried to cram in as many custom details as we possibly could, um, and as much detail as possible, because obviously the shorter the route, in theory, the more detail you sometimes need. And um, we went for all that. On here, you've got the dog waste pin, even, which has been added into Common Library. And then that's the Cromford Canal plaque that's on the wall there in real life, and then that footpath leads across to a car park. Uh, the canal goes around the hill that we're going to go under in a minute or so. We've got a hill here. Uh, really awesome little bit of engineering. You've got this girder bridge that goes over the over the River Derwent. And then the line goes into the, to Leewood Tunnel. Leewood Tunnel we're now going through. Only a short tunnel, we break out the other side and then head towards what's down more. So, again, because it's such a short line, I keep having to stop to try and show some of these details off that we're, that we're really keen on because of how much work we've put into it. Uh, so, you've got the Leeward Tunnel sign there, the tunnel mouth itself, which is quite nice. And then, obviously, you've got the aqueduct, which, as you can see, is here. So this aqueduct carries the canal which we saw a minute ago around at the junction. Carries the canal actually over the railway. Which is a pretty cool feature. Some uh, really impressive engineering going on there. And then they've got another custom bridge just here where we cross the River Derwent, which we'll watch the train go across now. And this is the site of the original High Peak Junction where that line that went up the incline used to go off. There used to be four tracks here at one point, uh, if not more. And we're now passing Holmesford Cottage. 
which I've just missed the train passing. There's too, too many details to try and get in in one video. But that's one of the little scenes that we've tried to add into this route to make it that bit more special. Again, another one up here uh, with the cottage, the cafe. When I did the research trip back in December, I actually went in this uh, little cafe. It was brilliant, really nice cakes and stuff in there. That was worth going to see. And then this bridge has also been made as well. Pretty much every bridge on the route has been specifically made. We're going to come up to yet another one on this next curve that's been made. As we lean into the curve here, uh, you go past a hoarder camp. Which you can't really see in this 158. And then we go over Willersley via what's down well viaducts. Which you've just gone over there. And the line now curves around into what's down well station. Before you get to the tunnel here, you pass the site of what was what's down well bridge station. And then you pass what's uh, arrive into what's down well itself after passing through the tunnel. So what's down well bridge station was just here on the right where those houses are. Now we're arriving into our Stanmore. Again, a really nice countryside feel to this one. Quite a, uh, a lean on the train here as it's on a super elevated curve. So you can see it's quite um, tilt on there, lean on. Again, gone for as much detail as we can really. You got the signage and the platforms. And once again it really hugs the um, canal. The canal's actually just here, right above the track. Uh, and this bridge, I researched this on the trip that went on in uh, December, I think it was, I went November. And we went up there and uh, did the canal photos and stuff. But you've also got the Wonderful little garden scene down here with the uh, old, style, old style signage. And then this little brick feature on the uh, bank in there that celebrates the centenary, which was 1894 to 1994. Once again, totally different pictures on the stations, as with all the stations we've seen. Some lovely artwork, and then this little sign here as well, which is uh, another centenary sign. And there's also there's other ones as well, such as the Community Gardening Project, the East Midlands Station Awards signs. Basically, every sign we could find on the station is in the game. Um, give or take a couple here and there. Um, we've got other details like telegraph poles, little junction boxes, trampolines and stuff. And just tried to put in as much as we possibly can in the development time that we've had for this project. To uh, really try and bring it to life as a raw branch line. So as we depart here, we... Uh, cross over a level crossing, user work crossing and then we head down to uh, Ambergate station where we join the Sheffield to Derby line. So the canal is now up, uh, up above us on the left. We run on a ledge here now, above the road, down to Armagate. So road, river, rail and canal all share this valley. River further down there, on the right. Speed limit on here for the most part is 50 miles an hour. The curve there back at what's down is 40 and there's a 10 mile an hour restriction at my lot bath. 
And this route comes with 13 scenarios that use payware stock. So that's stuff like your Armstrong Powerhouse packs, your Steam packs, your Just Trains packs as well. Uh, features a variety of different things. You've got 156s, 153s, uh, Class 20 rail, so there's a Class 37 test train. There's a Steam run with a Just Trains BR7MT. There's even a Class 222 working up here. Uh, because the Queen actually came up here in Ju July 2014 on a 222 uh, rather than the Royal Train up to Malot. And then there's a selection of default scenarios. So those scenarios use the Kuju uh, or rather European local and asset pack, which is what is required to run the route anyway. So those scenarios are available to anyone that owns this route. And that's so that people don't have to own all the stock to run some scenarios. So if you love your 166s, then those are scenarios for you. Line speed here drops to 25 miles an hour. On the curve towards Ambergate. At Ambergate we uh, stop on the curve. There used to be a triangle station here, you used to be able to go left in just a minute. Uh, and it used to join back onto the Sheffield to Derby line. There also used to be another platform for trains going towards Sheffield. There wasn't actually on the Midland Main Line, it was actually offset on this triangle of lines here. Nowadays at Ambergate it's just a single platform and you can just see on the left there where the line used to go left around the triangle. Uh, and this is the part of the old station that we're just about to go through. And this is where we do the token handover and we rejoin conventional signalling. And this is Ambergate station we're just pulling into now. Quite bad sighting for the signal which is just on the platform end and is a red signal as you can see. So due to depart, uh, we're just on just about on time here. Due to depart in about a minute's time, I think. 15:55, so it's a it's about a three minute wait here. And what that'll be, that'll be a mainline train that's passing the junction that we get held for. I've not even stopped in the station, so that's really poor driving. So you got Ambergate station. I believe this is the token box uh, for Ambergate, which is where we hand over the token for the line. The next train obviously going up the branch would then take it up. Yeah, I should have stopped at the two car stop which is here, so that's crap driving from me. Again, more custom posters and signage. Different ones here and there, that's a different one. And they were all photographed when we did the research trip. And this is the signal that's protecting the line here. So as you can see, we're currently waiting on 1C60 which is heading from Sheffield to St Pancras. And we'll be able to see that actually before it goes into the tunnel here at Ambergate. If we just wait here on the curve for it. Sounds like it's a HST. And then we'll follow that down the valley to Derby. So that is a VP185 HST, East Midlands Trains, or either East Midlands Railway HST. Some scenarios based in 2019 after East Midlands Railway, so this one is one of those. Obviously the HST has EMT branding on it, uh, but there's nothing we can do about that unfortunately. The Armstrong Powers packet obviously doesn't include the EMI livery because it uh, came out before the uh, new contract, the new franchise. So we're in an EMR regional unit. The 222s obviously carry the EMR to livery. So we're just going to wait now for the signal. I don't know if there's anything going north. I didn't check. No, nothing going north. So we should get the road here in uh, just a minute's time or so. Currently waiting for this uh, HST to get to where it is now. Down the far end of that um, 
section. And we're just getting the road now. So we don't have a feather, you'd get a feather if you were going into the passing loop. I should have used DRA there as well. Yeah, you'd get a feather if you were going into broad home loop. So we're still on the pre-2019, 2018 layout of Ambergate Junction with the 15 mile an hour limit. In real life it's now been modified to have a 50 mile an hour limit. Whether we'll do anything with that in a service pack, I don't know. We don't want to avoid, uh, we don't really want to modify the track too much because it could break everybody's scenarios as well as our own, so obviously something that's got to be uh, considered. And we're now running along a ledge before we cross the river again. We're now crossing the River Derwent at Ambergate. There's a 15 mile an hour limit over this junction and over the bridge there. Next stop for us, Belper. Not actually due there till 16.03. So we're running quite early at the minute. You can see why they've actually wanted to upgrade this junction because it is or was a tediously slow 15 mile an hour limit. And we join this section now, and the limit will obviously go up to 80 miles an hour. Once the view of the train clears that to cross over, which it will be doing now. HSTs and uh, stuff are permitted to 100 miles an hour now. now. So now we're on the Sheffield to Derby main line. We'll have a look at the map of the route we've just traversed. So we've come down through Ambergate, Watts Stanwell, High Peak Junction's there, Cromford, Matlock Bath. And Matlock. And we're now heading through Broad Home Loops. So we're now running under green signals because the HST's got quite a way in front of us. And this is the approach to Belper now. It's coming through the steep cuttings on both sides. As we come in and don't stop, basically. Bad stopping. Bad driving. Well, I've done better stops. 
I think I'm just carrying on my bad driving form from the uh, 68 video. Yeah, that's terrible. But at least some of the train was in the station. Could have been worse. Or I could have forgotten to stop. So for those that haven't seen Belper, this is included with the Derby to Sheffield version of the route. And that route is a requirement for the Derwent Valley route. And this was made by, uh, made by Alex Penfold. This station. Really nice model, I think. Lovely detail going on. Which is something that we're uh, really keen on these days, particularly is trying to get as much detail into our routes as possible. I'm just going to async keys this to speed the game up a bit because uh, I've kind of arrived here rather early. So we've got one more stop then at Duffield and then we've got Derby after that as well. Sounds like there might well be a train coming the other way. Indeed there is. And the train going the other way will probably be a Derby to Matlock, Newark to Matlock service. Because they pass in the opposite direction around this area. And indeed it is. So that service will go up the Matlock branch and that will form the 1637 or whatever service from Matlock back to Nottingham or Newark. More likely Newark Castle. We're heading through under the town centre now. Steep sided cuttings as you head out of Belper because the town's up above all the way through here. And then after that we'll head across the River Derby which will continue to follow all the way down to Derby. Derby. Why did I say Derby? Probably because I said Derby, who knows. As you can see, the new foliage that we've got, hopefully it's an opinion that people share, is a lot more um, varied and detailed than the original foliage. And if you drive the route in winter, you'll really see that it's much, much better, or spring. You'll see it's much better than the just trains original trees, why you, and that's why we obviously switched to them. Because we feel it's a much better option, in terms of how it looks. Next stop in just over a mile again will be Duffield. And obviously with us working on, myself and Tom Harrison, working on the extension of this route to Nottingham and Leicester, uh, and also Toton as well, you'll be able to drive this service right through from Matlock to Nottingham, assuming you own the, uh, the, you know, the correct route. You'll be able to drive those routes all the way through to Nottingham. Which will give you a really good run from Matlock, quite a long section, about an hour or so, I think. In terms of if you're installing this uh, Derwent Valley route, make sure you've obviously got Midland Mainline installed first, and also the update that was released on the 18th of February, I believe it was. And this is Milford Tunnel we're now going through. And we'll emerge from here straight into Duffield. We'll actually try and stop at Duffield rather than what we did at Belper.
I'm just arriving into Duffield now. Another one for people that haven't seen Duffield before. You got the uh, Ecclesbourne Valley Railway platform on this side. And that's just continues around the corner at a short distance uh, so that people can, if they want, use AI trains and stuff. But obviously, just to give that a bit of detail of having the station in there. And then obviously, you got Duffield Station itself, which is here. And you can see where the track bed used to be on the inside there of the uh, footbridge. How many more tracks used to actually run through Duffield? There's quite a few tracks. Next stop then Derby in five miles time. So we've got about two miles from Duffield of double track and then we join the um St Mary's Junction we spread out to four tracks for the final run into Derby. So we're just passing a preliminary route indicator, that arrow there telling us that the junction at Redsell is set to go straight ahead and not onto the slow lines. So you get two of those before the actual control and signal. So the arrow wasn't referring to this signal, it was actually referring to the next signal. After this signal we'll pass another one of those preliminary route indicators and then we'll pass the actual signal that it's referring to. So straight ahead arrow tells me I'm staying on the fast line from Redsall Junction. If I had a left arrow, I would be going onto the slow line and I'd get a 50 mile an hour limit at Redsall Junction. So we're now getting a left route indicator, so that's telling us that the junction at St Mary's uh, is set for us to go across onto line C or D, which are 60 mile an hour turnouts, so I'm going to shut the power off and get ready to slow down. So we're just approaching St Mary's North Junction. At St Mary's South Junction we'll turn off. Basically so that we can access platforms uh, 5 and 6 at Derby. As you can see the indicator above there telling us that we're on the up fast line still. The second of the preliminary route indicators there once again reminding us that we're going left. I'm going to bring the speed down to 60 miles an hour. Ready for this junction.
So we're running under a double yellow. Which of course does mean we've got access already to Derby. We're already signalled in there with that double yellow signal. That tile lag there is just as we're loading in the huge tile at Derby, which is like 3,000 assets on it. And we're going across again now onto line D on the approach to Derby itself. Another AWS warning tells us that the limit's going to go down to 30, and that's after we go over the road as we're heading to Derby. And bus depot on the right. I'll slow the train down now. Signal clear to a double yellow. We've got a platform six indicator showing now. Line from Chatterston there coming in on the left. And we're now arriving into Derby Station itself. Just going forward to our stop board, which is just in front of me on the left. Shall I manage to make a stop for once in the right place? Now, obviously, brings this scenario to a close. Now, we're obviously in real life. Uh, Next up, we'll be working towards Nottingham and Leicester. That's well in progress from Tom Harrison's side. I've got some work to start on that next, heading towards Nottingham and Long Eaton and stuff like that. And uh, that should be out later this year. Again, I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. The route is now available from Just Trains. It is the Middle and Mainline Derwent Valley add-on. Uh, and that wide section from Ambergate up to Matlock that we've shown today. Available for $7.99. You require Sheffield to Derby first. And I uh, really appreciate you viewing as always. Please do leave comments, like and subscribe. Uh, don't forget Tom's usually on Twitch Wednesdays and Fridays. No, yeah, Wednesdays and Fridays at half seven. www.twitch.tv forward slash TV underscore Tom. The view, there'll be a link in the description which will show you where you can purchase that. Thanks for watching guys. See you later. Bye.